Hey, you remember the um, guy in Ohio who had this um, wildlife preserve? Now, I'm not sure why folks like to have these dangerous animals. I remember Mike Tyson had a tiger, and then he'd be sparring the tiger in the yard and everything like that. I guess it gives them a sort of important feel. But very uh, rarely they harm the owners, but owners are harmed, and we don't hear a hog. I was speaking to some firemen from some city, and they say, man, we used to get some call with some of these exotic pets, these people have this hold on them, like some of them with a python, the python bite them on the butt and trying to squeeze the foot. Now, they're lucky that he's just wrapped around the foot and not around the waist, you know what I mean, around the upper torso or whatever, so that they can't breathe, they can't breathe and they die. So this guy has these dangerous and big uh, animals. Now, I'm not sure which happened first, when he shot himself or they were attacked him or he had the money to feed them and, and they must behave really extraordinary and, and break the cage and come out, I don't know. But the whole place was locked down because of this dangerous uh, condition that these animals pose uh, in the community. And I, I'm appealing to folks, be careful how you have these animals, man. These animals, you might have it from, from birth or whatever, but when they get old, they play a certain way, you know. They have certain instincts that they want to actualize, bro. And, and anytime they play like how they played one another, you can get your bones broken because us human beings are not match these animals. Um, you know, we know that Adam and Eve, they had control of the animals, and that was different. They were bigger than us, maybe three times our size, and real proportionate and strong. They probably could have pushed down some of these houses we have around today, or lift these cars, or even a truck up. So, these animals wouldn't have attacked them. In fact, those animals weren't that vicious. But over time, people bred them for viciousness, and did genetic things, you know, mix it with this animal, mix it with the animal, until they have a bad, vicious something, and they call it to the name, like original name, here's a lion, because lion and lamb is sat down way back in the garden. But it's different. They mix it up with some stuff that they're vicious now. So people need to be smart. Even tonight, I see this fellow playing with this mangy dog. The dog's smelling bad. He's hugging the dog. Like he's so lonely, he needs to hug somebody. Instead of get some wife or at get his kids or, or whatever, he's he hugging this nasty smelling you know, mangy dog. And then he put his hand by his chin and, you know, like he was some deep thought. And then his hand going over his lip. And then somebody gave him a cigarette and put the cigarette in his hand and put it in his mouth. You know what I mean? I mean, there's some disease he's going to get. Now, his immunity could be robust because of the constant nastiness he's doing. So it may not kill him. But his body's going to be fighting these bad disease. And, and the energy that he could have used to, to, to get himself off the skid row and get a life is being dissipated and fighting these disease that he's getting from playing around with his dog. I mean, people doing it all the time. They even kiss the dogs. Like, things are so bad that humans they have to turn to animals for affection and for uh, emotional support. Well, they say that animals, especially dog, is man's best friend. No, not my best friend because I don't have no dog and I don't want a dog. And, and, and you have a dog, praise the Lord. I recall, though, I was in um, uh, Oakland, California, and this big dog, uh, Alsatian dog, maybe, but, you know, big one. Um, it was running away from the owner and standing in the middle of the road. So this fellow going up to the top to play a whole dog. He back up. I said, Yes, he back up, you know. And um, he didn't continue to go to the dog to tear him up the day, you know. But I ain't going near period. I'm not going to be touching a dog. I'm not going to go in there because I know, I know, I know as a child, you know, I know what's wrong with these animals, man. They like to play their own play. And I mean, you end up, you end up getting you know, you, 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 some serious injuries. So this guy up in Ohio, uh, it's unfortunate he had to die, and I, I don't know exactly who, the circumstances that led to his death and, and the escape of these animals, but and why are you going to take these animals out to the wild and try to domesticate them? You could never change them. You just condition them. You got good food and you're playing, you know, me, 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 me with them, and they're cool because they're eating, but let them get hungry and so forth. Like these dogs, for example, these people have in the house. Up in Louisiana, through the um, Katrina and so forth, and other places where people are abandoning animals because they can't afford them, these dogs are getting into packs and they're attacking humans and eating them up, man. So you think that because they're domesticated, that they have lost that viciousness and they've lost that meanness and that uh, uh, that sort of desire to, to play rough and to eat you up? You're mistaken because I only hope that you don't have a chance or they don't have a chance to maul you or to eat you up. But I, I keep them at a distance. They ain't coming in my house, they're not in my bed, I'm not kissing them. It's like, thank you that you're going to take care of them, but I don't want a part of that. 
I prefer to do it with humans. I prefer to help a human child, a human person. A lot of women out there with kids that need help. I prefer to help them with no intentions of you want to get them there or you want, you know, pay back with it. But just be able to put in the dog, put in some little child, show the interest in that child, encourage the child to go to college or to be, you know, uh, different, not druggies like the rest of the community and so forth. And and I think you'd, you'd, you'd be serving a good purpose. And hey, that child could come back and look for you sometime and say, you know, that word you told me, look where I'm at today, and if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. Uh, and that alone should make you feel good. But a dog, you know, just die like a dog. It's gone, even if it's around, it has no tanks, no nothing to give you. Man, think, okay, 